Released in 2002, Ripley's Game is a captivating thriller film that is based on Patricia Highsmith's third novel in the Tom Ripley series. The film depicts the violent killing spree of the notorious Ripley. The book, published in 1974, is the source material for the film, delving into the twisted psyche of Ripley. The film opens in Berlin where Tom Ripley and the British criminal Reeves team up to produce fake artwork for a large sum of money. However, their collaboration takes a negative turn when Reeves tries to deceive Ripley by making a secret deal with a client and denying him his rightful share of the proceeds. This act of betrayal angers Ripley, and he confronts the client to demand more money for their forged artwork, but his efforts prove fruitless. Ripley's disappointment with the client's refusal drives him to take drastic measures. Out of fury, Ripley murders the client's bodyguard and compels the client by using a gun to give him the money that was meant for the fake artwork. Furthermore, he reclaims the artwork and retains it for himself. Despite the severity of his deeds, Ripley maintains a composed and collected demeanor and exits the premises as if nothing occurred. He severs his ties with Reeves, telling him that the $1.2 million is simply a parting gift. After the events in Berlin, Tom Ripley has settled down with his wife Louisa in a lavish villa in Veneto, Italy. Three years have passed, and Ripley has managed to leave his dark past behind him. His wife, Louisa, is a talented hopsichordist, and the couple is enjoying a life of luxury and comfort. However, their peaceful existence is disrupted when a neighbor invites Ripley to a party. Reluctant to attend, Ripley eventually agrees, hoping to mingle with the high society of Veneto. At the party, he overhears the host, Jonathan Trevenney, making derogatory comments about his taste and reputation, insinuating that Ripley's wealth is ill-gotten. After being insulted and hurt, Ripley confronts Trevenney for a brief moment, but the encounter leaves him feeling unhappy and dejected. He comprehends that, despite his attempts to move forward, his past continues to haunt him, and he will always be regarded with suspicion and disdain by those he interacts with. Reeves unexpectedly shows up at Ripley's house and confronts him about their prior business dealings. Reeves reminds Ripley that he knows how Ripley earned a significantly larger sum of money, enabling him to live a lavish lifestyle, which irritates Ripley. Reeves then requests that Ripley eliminate a rival mobster. Ripley contacts Reeves and suggests Trevor Nee for a job as payback for the offense. Thinking that Trevor Nee, a terminally ill, law-abiding art framer, could be the assassin, Reeves contacts him and offers him the job for a significant sum. Initially, Trevor Nee is bewildered and refuses, stating that he's only a small picture framer with a small shop. However, he eventually agrees to meet with Reeves and learn more about the job. Reeves informs Trevor Nee that he must assassinate a very evil man for $50,000. At first, Trevor Nee believes it's a joke and laughs, but Reeves makes it clear that he is not joking. Then. Following Ripley's suggestion, Reeves doubles the offer. To ensure that his wife and son are provided for after his death, Trevor Nee accepts the job. Trevor Nee goes to Berlin, pretending to seek medical treatment for his leukemia, and meets with a research foundation while using it as cover to kill the mobster at a museum. The doctor's evaluation confirms his medical condition, and after the meeting, he meets Reeves for further instructions about the assassination. Trevor Nee skillfully completes the job with a single shot, then returns home to his family, trying to resume his normal life. However, he receives another call from Reeves, who offers him even more money to kill another mobster, this time on a train. At first, Trevor Nee refuses, but he ultimately gives in when Reeves threatens his family's safety. Reeves arrives unexpectedly at Ripley's home while his wife was rehearsing and asked to speak to him. He convinces Ripley to step outside and then requests that he convince Trevor Nee to take on another job. At first, Ripley declines, saying that one job is sufficient. However, Reeves reveals that Trevor Nee has already agreed to the second job, leaving Ripley taken aback. Ripley is unhappy with Reeves' request and can't comprehend why Trevor Nee agreed to take on the job. He is aware that Trevor Nee is an innocent man who had never engaged in such activities before. Despite this, Ripley decides to speak to Trevor Nee about it. Trevor Nee clarifies that he had accepted the job to secure his family. 
He also mentions that he had already completed the first job by killing the intended target at a museum in Berlin. As the events unfold, Ripley begins to comprehend the gravity of his own actions and how they affect innocent people like Trevor Nee. He feels a deep sense of guilt for unintentionally drawing Trevor Nee into the criminal world and putting his life in danger. Despite the fact that everything has turned out well for Trevor Nee, Ripley can't help but feel responsible for the predicament he finds himself in. Trevor Nee's anxiety over the task he has accepted becomes overwhelming as he travels on the train. He is plagued by doubt and fear, and the weight of the situation is almost too much to bear. At one point, he even considers ending his own life, rather than going through with the assassination. But something within him keeps him from giving up, and he summons the courage to proceed. As he approaches his target, he tries to maintain his composure and stay focused. But just as he is about to strike, Ripley appears out of nowhere and takes charge of the situation. Together, they eliminate the target and his bodyguards in a tense and harrowing confrontation inside the train's small bathroom. After the successful mission, Trevor Nee and Ripley retreat in the cramped confines of the train's toilet. There, Trevor Nee is forced to confront the reality of what he has done, and the depth of his own shame and regret is overwhelming. As they return home, Trevor Nee's mind is consumed with the thought of how he will explain the big amount of cash to his wife Sarah. He had never been one to keep secrets from her, but the thought of confessing to being a hired killer made his stomach churn with anxiety. When he tries to convince her that he had won the money through gambling, Sarah remains skeptical, sensing that something more sinister is at play. The weight of his guilt begins to take a toll on Trevor Nee, and he realizes that he cannot keep his actions a secret from those closest to him. He must find a way to come clean about what he has done, no matter how difficult it may be. At the same time, he is grappling with the emotional trauma of having taken another person's life and the realization that he can never go back to his old way of living. Trevor Nee pays a visit to Ripley one day to deliver some troubling news. He has received reports that one of the bodyguards from the train job is still alive, and he is concerned that the man may have seen his face during the incident. Trevor Nee fears for the safety of his family, knowing that the man's associates may try to track them down. Ripley listens carefully to Trevor Nee's concerns and assures him it is highly unlikely that anyone will be able to find them. Despite Ripley's advice to keep a low profile and avoid attracting attention, Reeves disregards the warnings due to his fear of being targeted by the mobs for their involvement in a killing. Eventually, the day arrives when associates of the mobs come to Italy seeking revenge. Reeves manages to escape and turns to Ripley for assistance, but Ripley refuses to directly help him. Instead, he asks his wife to make an excuse for his absence, as he is anticipating visitors over the weekend. To ensure their safety, Ripley cautions Trevor Nee to sever all ties with Reeves to avoid getting involved in a perilous situation. Despite the warning, Trevor Nee decides to aid Reeves and the two form an alliance to shield themselves. Even though they had taken every possible precaution, the dangerous and cunning mobsters were able to locate and track down Reeves. In a violent and gruesome manner, the mobsters mercilessly end Reeves' life, leaving his lifeless and bloody corpse inside the trunk of a car. Things become even more perilous when the mobsters, armed to the teeth and seeking revenge, raid Ripley's luxurious villa in a brazen and brutal attack. With their blood boiling with vengeance, the mobsters show no mercy as they storm the property with the intention of killing anyone who stand in their way. Ripley, knowing the danger of being involved with the mobs, took every precaution to safeguard himself and Trevor Nick. He had set up booby traps all over his house to ensure their safety in case of an attack. When Trevor Nee asked if he was scared, Ripley admits that he is not scared but rather frightened. With Trevor Nee's help, Ripley fiercely fights back against the mobsters, using every weapon and strategy at their disposal. Despite being outnumbered, they are able to hold their ground and eliminate all of their attackers. Ripley is under the impression that all the assailants have been dealt with, and he parts ways with Trevor Nee. However, upon returning home, Trevor Nee is confronted with a horrifying sight two gangsters have taken his wife Sarah hostage. Ripley happens to notice the assassin's car park near Trevor Nee's house and rushes back to help just in the nick of time. In the ensuing chaos, one of the attackers opens fire on Ripley, 
but Trevor Neax quickly and jumps in front of Ripley to shield him from the bullet. Ripley is baffled by Trevor Nee's heroic action and tries to show his gratitude by offering Sarah her husband's share of the payment. However, Sarah rejects the money, considering it as a payment for her husband's life, and expresses her anger and repulsion towards the whole situation, blaming Ripley for causing all the trouble. She even spits in his face, showing her utter disdain towards him. Ripley places the money on the ground and departs. On the same night of the incident, Ripley attends Lucer's concert, hoping to ease his mind from the traumatic events that had taken place earlier. However, despite trying to focus on the music, Ripley's thoughts keep drifting back to the selfless act of bravery displayed by Trevor Nee, and he can't help but smile for a moment at the memory of his friend's loyalty and courage. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.